Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles Sabans. We want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and we give you guys a first perspective on things. And now we see them. And today we have a pretty interesting show for you guys. But before we get into it, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Now, this is going to be a pretty interesting one. Uh, but if you guys want the full show before it comes out on YouTube, it is streaming for free on Apple Podcasts. You can check that out. We have that pinned in the comment section below. Let me get into this topic here. So this is a topic I'm going to enjoy because it kind of relates to what we do here. As you guys know, creating your own platform on YouTube, a podcast, whatever, uh, it's, a, it's, it's, it's an extremely daunting endeavor. It's a very challenging undertaking, uh, especially when you're not known. It's very, very, very hard. Take it from personal experience. We've been, we've been on YouTube now, I believe it's been what five years uh we have what 170 plus thousand subs and we have what a, a thousand uh, what is it what is it a thousand seven hundred plus videos right we put in a lot of work um creating your own platform in this space is very difficult number one because of the competition the volume of content that gets produced around sports in the nba is a lot Right. So you're competing with a lot of people creating the same content as you. And you're also creating with uh, competing uh, with bigger names. And what is happening is that people that were on television that are now coming into the independent space are beginning to see just how challenging that is. And that's really where we're going today with this particular conversation, because as you guys know, we recently did a story on Stephen A. Smith and we actually uh, yeah, we recently did a story on Stephen A. Smith discussing why on, on the outkick. Uh, Clay Travis's outkick discussing why he believes that he needs to be or he ought to be the highest paid uh, um, per personality at ESPN. Right. So we know that. And he gave his reasons for, for that. So this morning I came across a show from uh, Jason Whitlock where he was discussing this very thing. Now, as you guys know, Stephen A. Smith and Jason Whitlock have had their back and forth, their public back and forth. Uh, so in this particular clip, uh, Jason Whitlock was reacting to Stephen A. Smith's comments. And as he was explaining himself, he was basically saying that, listen, uh, if Stephen A. Smith went the independent route without the push of ESPN, he thinks that he would struggle and he wouldn't be as big as he is today. So what we want to do is want to play exactly uh, what Jason Whitlock had to say about um, Stephen A. Smith's comments on the Clay Travis show. And then we're going to come back and give you guys our thoughts. Take a listen to what Jason Whitlock had to say here. We can say what we want about the cord cutting, the the loss of influence in terms of cable and satellite, how ESPN has declining ratings and how many homes are not in anymore. All of that is true. But what's also true is that is still an incredibly strong, iconic brand. There is a value to being on that platform. So if he's willing to take that risk, if he's not the A-Rod 2001 on the free agent market, best of luck to him. I, I don't think he's going to be forced to, to, to do that. I do think ESPN and him will come to a deal. But I, I'm going to give you another name that in the YouTube space, he won't be able to compete with Pat McAfee. Mm. He, he just won't. And, and, and that's not in any way me taking a shot at Stephen A. Smith because he's already done some good things in the YouTube space. Having Tom Brady on his YouTube show and Tom Brady saying some really provocative things says, hey, Stephen A is going to be a force over here. But but what you're arguing is, let's say Stephen A wasn't on ESPN at all. Because again, th does he get Tom Brady on his YouTube channel if he's not still connected to ESPN? Maybe not. Because uh, I, I don't see the synergy there other than, uh, hey, you know, Stephen A's rich, Tom Brady's rich, and we're both in the sports world. But does Tom Brady really like and or care anything about Stephen A. Smith? No. I think Aaron Rodgers has a real affinity for Pat McAfee, and there's a bond there. And that's why Aaron Rodgers has been coming on Pat McAfee's show, plus the money they're paying him. Uh, but, but I'm not – because just take and, – and Stephen A is building out his business, and that's – why he's doing an interview with Clay Travis. These two guys are, 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 are 
there's an inauthenticity to both of those guys, and that's why Stephen A. is on Clay Travis's show trying to reach out uh, to conservatives. But th- there's no common ground there other than they're both, they'll do anything for money and, and traction. Uh, so I, I, I find it interesting what he's saying. I think ESPN's going to pay him. I think he'll have success uh, over YouTube because he is a talented guy. But if he had to step out here and really compete off the steroids of ESPN, it's it's hard. It's hard. And 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 then it comes down to uh, what are you willing? And and he's already proven he's willing to tell virtually any lie and promote any narrative, because uh, because over here in his YouTube world, this is a weighted headwind situation depending on what truth you tell. And, and uh, you know, Stephen A is willing to play that game with YouTube. He won't, he'll support the vaccine. He'll support whatever he's supposed to support to get YouTube <clears throat> success. So he, he'll, he'll have some success, but all this beating his chest, I'm number one, you're going to come over here and find out McAfee and Shannon Sharp, you know, uh, pardon my take, guys. Uh, uh, Bill Simmons, Ryan Rossillo. There's a lot of guys with strong followings. And and Stephen A, his level of expertise on sports just is so weak that I'm not sure if he would could topple a lot of these guys that already got a head start on him. So you heard what Jason Whitlock had to say. Here are my thoughts on this. and I ha- And I have a few. First of all, from an from, from an objective standpoint, he is speaking the gospel. He's saying the truth. Um, people don't realize how much of a push platforms like ESPN, FS1, and all of these platforms give you. They really, really do. Now, is it to say that you cannot be successful on YouTube and these platforms? No. But to discount the role that these major networks play in terms of giving you a push in the independent space, um, I think would be wrong headed. The fact of the matter is this, it is not easy to comp- to to grow in the independent space because the mechanisms that are in place for you to grow are quite different than those on TV. Number one, you're dealing with an algorithm, which behaves in a way that no one really understands. Number two, there are other things that go into the success of a channel that are different from that of a television show. On a television show, in the case of a Stephen A. Smith, yeah, you may be part of the production crew in terms of helping to pick topics, whatever. But essentially what happens is you show up, you perform. And there's so many other things that are taking place around you that make your show a success the cameraman the sound the marketing around the show the 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 what is it the the, the the lighting in the studio the promotion of the show the the the, the graphics under the thing all of these different things that go into to making an excellent tv show well on youtube you are now essentially responsible for all of those things and all of those roles that get played on television you got to do them. And not only do you have to do those things, you have to do more. You also have to research your own topics. You also have to come up with, you know, you think Stephen A. Smith is the one coming up with those titles under the copy, under those videos, you got to be smoking some hot. He's not. You think Stephen A. Smith is the one doing those thumbnails? He's not. And if you discount just your titles and your thumbnails, you've already lost the game. Because if nobody clicks on your video, it doesn't matter how great your content is. If nobody watches it, then nobody's going to watch it. The other thing these guys have going in their favor is that they have the brand recognition because people have seen them on television. So they're going to the the likelihood of them trusting them is going to be much greater if they um, if it was over someone that they didn't know. So you also have that you have the brand recognition and also also YouTube pushes legacy content creators. They push ESPN. Whether or not the content is good, they're going to push them anyway and they're going to grow faster than others. Now, in some cases, it falls apart if you look at a Skip Bayless. Skip Bayless has not been able to translate over to YouTube, but there have been people that have that are that have been successful. 
uh, um, uh, Pat McAfee, of course, Jason Whitlock to an extent. Uh, he has, yes. Um, uh, Clay Travis, uh, uh, you know, and so many others, JJ Reddick, and so many others have done well in the end. I'm not talking about podcasts like interview show. I'm just talking about guys that are talking about sports, like a sports uh, talk show, right? Um, and I agree with him. If Stephen A. Smith was a journalist that never worked on ESPN, but still had all of his skills as a writer and all of and then just opened up a YouTube channel, you would discover that it's very, very hard because YouTube is very, very competitive. It is very, 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 very competitive. Very competitive, right? So I think he makes a point. If we, the Dreamers Pro Show, got licensed, think about this, to uh, ESPN, and we still were able to produce content on our channel, how much faster do you think we'll grow? Like, let's be for real. We would be at a million subs in less than a year. Quite literally, the way we produce content and the volume of content that we produce. Quite literally, we would be at a million subs by next year. And that's just the push of what TV gives you. So to discount that means, number one, you either don't understand what the hell is going on or you're just being disingenuous. And I think he makes a valid point, a real point. So these are my thoughts. Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section. We catch you guys on the next show. Peace.